Alrighty. And now let's take a look at an interview I had earlier today with Shreveport Fire Chief Clarence Reese. He talked a little bit about a purchase they just made that was approved by the city. I'm going to let him tell it. All right. I now have joining us Chief Clarence Reese with the Shreveport Fire Department. Chief Reese, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so you guys have some new equipment. Tell us a little bit about that process and your new digs. Sure, absolutely. Uh, very gracious to uh, the city council who unanimously voted for us to have a, a rescue boat. That legislation was put forth by uh, Councilwoman Tabitha Taylor. As many of you know, that most of her district, uh, all across Lake is, uh, uh, the majority of Cross Lake is her district. Uh, so we did approach her. They've been asking the city council and the members that uh, from the previous council have been asking about uh, the cost of a boat for probably the last eight months. Uh, it's very hard to get supplies right now. So getting a boat now, uh, it's going to run us about a year, but we had to get the ball rolling uh, as soon as possible. And C Cross Lake is an area we see a lot of flooding at, but dig a little bit deeper into there if you could and tell me a little bit why it's so important for you guys to have access to a boat specifically sure. for rescues. Sure. So the, uh, our dive team is the oldest technical rescue in the state of Louisiana. Uh, that right now we have roughly about 40 master divers. We have a very robust uh, dive team. Uh, anybody that's been on the waterways in, uh, in Kettle Parish knows that all of it is really considered uh, black water really for us. As soon as you put your head underwater, uh, there's very limited visibility, if, if at all any visibility. But uh, with having a robust dive team, we want to make sure that our members have a uh, have adequate equipment. Uh, we've had several incidents here within the last two months with people either threatening to uh, with people threatening to jump off of uh, Texas Street Bridge, that railroad trestle on Red River, and also recently we had a uh, uh, guy go in the water from a boat and saved his life. Uh, the life jacket saved his life, but we had to get to him and we had to make a rescue and get him back to uh, back to shore. So we a uh, dive boat. We've had it. For, we've had one for years. Uh, the one we had was outdated. It was ruined um, during one of the uh, during one of the floods. So it was imperative that we get. We needed a dive boat pretty bad. Absolutely. And will you all be able to assist in other departments' uh, endeavors as well? Absolutely. Now they do have a uh, cattle sheriff's office still has boats. Uh, Bozier sheriff's office has boats. Shreveport Police Department they have a boat. However, what we do is very unique because we have divers. Uh, especially 40, uh, 40 master divers. Uh, we make recoveries for many law enforcement agencies uh, that don't have divers. You know, just having a boat doesn't mean you have divers. So we have those divers. We're able to make uh, vehicle recoveries, weapon recoveries, uh, and also a piece of that technology and that the amendment that was passed or that resolution that passed, um, that that's also supposed to include a, a live scan scope. So we are able to quickly identify what's at the uh, bottom of the river or lake uh, or swimming, we're able to identify that very quickly and make a more efficient and safe dive. Absolutely. And how much does something like this cost, like approximately, and where do the funds come from? Right. So right now, the funds for that boat are uh, being approved by uh, the uh, by the city. That, so those are city funds. Uh, the boat itself is roughly about ninety nine thousand dollars. That includes a trailer uh, that goes with it. But this is a um, uh, a specific specifically designed for diving keeps about five to six divers on that boat uh and again it makes it to where we can carry our equipment and it's it's just a lot more effective and efficient uh when it, we're really trying to bring closure to a lot of families that may have lost someone or we're trying to help uh, a, a neighboring agency um uh, close a case also with that boat would also possibly be used for uh, any disasters that may uh happen down south uh, when we need to do rescues there, is, uh, there also. But we have a mutual aid agreement where we, we do help other agencies. Um, so, you know, having that piece of equipment, again, oldest rescue, oldest technical rescue in the state of Louisiana. Absolutely. And while this is an investment, can you just explain a little bit about how long this investment could serve our community? Oh, absolutely. The last boat we had probably served our community for almost 25 years. Uh, if that boat had not been ruined during that flood, we'd probably still be using that boat, even though it's uh, it was outdated and probably need to be decommissioned. Uh, we try to maximize every piece of equipment that we have, and you can see that by the fire trucks that we have on the uh, on the streets right now. We try to get every little bit that we can out of it to uh, maximize citizens' tax dollars. 
All righty. Well, Chief Reese, thank you so much for your time and speaking with us a little bit about that, breaking it down. Uh, we definitely look forward to having you back on News 12 now. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much.